Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here today with an episode of Use Your Books. So this is where we actually use some of the books that we have, or magazines in this case. And I'm going through this one currently, which is my Somerset Studio um, from volume, it's 2012, um, November, December, volume 16, issue 6. So today I stumbled upon this, which is judging a book by its cover by Connie Fong. If I can find Connie's social media stuff, I will link her down below. Um, but I'm just kind of going visually through this magazine. And I really like how she's created this piece of art. Now, for those of you who have been around for a while, you've seen me create book covers that have like these kind of, you know, pieced collage kind of covers. I did it with my Curiosa collection in a more sculptural way, but I've also done flatter, um, similar things. But in this case, she's making a piece that is like a wall hanging piece of art, and she's opened a whole book um, so that on the inside, this is the book spine here, and then this is the two pieces of um you know the book itself right the covers and then she's doing like collage on the front of the piece to have it be like a flat laid piece so let me read a little of this to you this spring i went to the third annual altered book exhibit in novato california at the marin museum of contemporary art 150 local artists donated their altered book creations and 100 percent of the sales from the auction went to benefit the museum this was my very first time attending and i'm sure i'll be back next year there were so many different and creative ways these artists transformed a book it was absolutely amazing i was particularly inspired by one piece created by melinda tidwell i immediately went home and tried to make one of these creations myself so here again we have this flow of inspiration right connie fong inspired by melinda tidwell and now here i am looking at this and, and thinking what can i do to do my take on it and isn't that just kind of the beauty of artistic relationships um Earlier in the year, I purchased some vintage book covers from Jenny Bowland's Mercantile site for a dollar each. I took the inside cover, turned it sideways, and used it as my blank canvas. I wanted to build a collage using primarily book elements and limit the color palette to neutrals and black. My first element was a mini book. I pulled off the cover, cut out a window, inserted a vintage photo, covered the book with a page of vintage text, and added some bookbinding tape. I added another type of mini book that that I uh, made from a thick magazine. Using a heavy-duty guillotine paper cutter, I cut out a small section of the magazine spine in the shape of a rectangle. I covered the magazine cover with vintage text and sewed a button to the front. Adding these mini books gives the collage some dimension. I added another assorted other assorted vintage elements and book related objects to finish off the collage. I found that using white paste and a rubber roller worked the best to adhere most of the items. I punched two holes on the top of the book to thread a ribbon through for the hanging of the collage. Maybe you can judge a book just by its cover. So Connie Fong is an artist living in uh, Piedmont, California or Piedmont. Um, you may find her work at artfulplay.blogspot.com. So I'll see if I can find some updated social media because this is, you know, quite old. Um, um, but let's just, you know, take a look here. So she's got this book binding tape across these two sort of like little mini booklets that she's made. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So, you know, if we examine this, right, she's done some stamping. She's added a little nib here inside a ribbon. Um, she's taken this bit of text from a book, added a ribbon up top, added a little photo there. This is just some letters with a little string around it, a little like cabinet card, but I think she said she cut this piece out herself and put a little vintage photo inside. Some text here from a French book. Um, these are these two little booklets inside that, that binding. A little fussy cut there and some French text on a background with some stripes, but she still sticks to the neutral. Um, this is like a little book of numbers. Um, it looks like the Ready Reckoner type book um, and a little button holding it closed, a see-through envelope with some ribbon and a little pocket that looks stitched with a little piece of paper inside. So generally speaking, that is kind of the aesthetic that I'm going to go with today, but mine will be a little bit different. Um, I've got a bunch of things here. So let me just <coughs> set aside 
some of the stuff that I don't immediately need. So what I'm planning here is, this is an old book, this is The Flowering of New England, 1815 to 1865, and I have, um, I got this book quite some time ago in, um, this large auction of books that I got and I had so many that I had to literally just strip them out and keep just what I needed from them like a few pages of them and then the covers that I wanted to keep because I just had too 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 much um so now I'm just gonna see if I want to pull any more of the book spine out here because I'm actually just gonna make not a piece of art to hang on the wall because I'd be using this if I were doing what she had done and I mean it would be beautiful for sure to do this as a piece of hanging art but I don't actually need any you know hanging art in fact I have too much hanging art so much so that I have lots of frames that are packed up in storage at the moment it's one of the hard things about you know art and being an art collector and just in general home home things is it's easy to kind of tap out on what you need um, when it's just sort of an aesthetic thing, right? Not to say that I won't still buy art because I definitely will. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that little bit. That's nice for collage. Let's see if we can get any of this off up here. I like to try to remove whatever I can here because I just love these bits. Okay. So now what I'm thinking is I'll set my pieces aside here that I plan to use. Um, I would like to do like a bit of a whitewash over these blue covers. Um, try to leave that alone, but otherwise I want to do a bit of a whitewash. So I think the first thing I'd like to do is find uh, like a little, maybe a little piece of tape. Just some masking tape here to just kind of cover this. Now, I don't want to have a square, really. Or do I want to have a square? Because most other things on this page will probably be geometric. So maybe it does make sense to make this geometric. But I need a little bit bigger piece. That's a little too small. So let's grab this. Cut off the, the bits. So I had to take a tiny little break to help my daughter with something. Um, and then I just kind of rethought, rethought my decision. And actually, I don't want to cover that. I'm going to try something else. So I want to whitewash this, um, these blue covers. I've got a little bit of rusty water here. Um, and then a bit of antique white, uh, just acrylic paint. You could use gesso. And I'm just going to add a bit of acrylic paint in here. And just kind of give it a stir. It's be a little milky at first, but I do need considerably more paint than that. There we go. I'm just gonna grab a um, piece of paper to kind of wipe the excess paint on. Get an idea of what we have here. Still a little too watery. Usually I would put this in something where I could shake it up, but this is also fine. Okay. Yeah, that's a little closer to what I'm looking for, I think. Yep. All right, let's move the paper out of the way. And then we'll just come over here. Maybe I'll get a paper to just put under the book as I'm painting. Just start over on this side here. And then I'm just gonna go right over this and whatever happens, happens. If I can wipe it off, great. If I can't, also fine, not a big deal. That little gilded owl doesn't necessarily like make or break anything. But I'll stop for a moment and just kind of give it a little 
a little rub. I'm just get a little bit of um, fabric from my scrap bin here, like a little cloth. And we'll just kind of try to polish this a little. that thread okay so it's visible um, which is good I'm not gonna stress too much about like how the around it looks um, so I can come back in Just gonna overlap a little bit onto the band here, this like creamy colored kind of band. It's kind of like milk painting really. Just gonna go around a little more and we may end up completely covering that if I just decide I don't like it which may happen because I feel slightly like the blue just attracts a little from my kind of neutral focus but I don't know I may end up just covering it right now to be honest we'll see we'll give it a second I'll do this side and then I'll reevaluate <laughs> And I like how this paint kind of soaks into the book spine or cover rather the book cloth. Okay. So do I still feel like this adds much? Not really. So we're going to cover it just for even coverage. Okay, so is that dark enough? I think so. I might just do a couple more swipes on this side. Okay. I'm going to leave the spine alone. I like the blue on it. And then this is going to need a little bit of time to dry. So while it dries, I'm going to prepare all the things to make all the little bits and bobs that we're going to need. All right, so while that dries, let's take a look at the things I have here. So I grabbed this little frame stamp um, and I have some lovely kind of, this is rust dyed paper. So I want to make a stamp of that because that would be nice on that cover. Let's make sure we're inked, looks good. Go right over here. A little light right there. Let's just do a couple. Let's see. I might need to re ink this big ink pad. It's been a little bit. There we go, that's a little better. Okay, so set that aside. Now again, I'm gonna be going with a bit of like geometry here. So I'm just gonna cut this out. Set the rest of the paper aside because we'll probably need more of that. And get my little cutter here. Give a nice neat outline to this. Okay. Set that there. Then I need, um, here we go, a bit of just like a folder 
for gluing things down on to give them a little bit more lift. So I'll start with this and I've got a little dish of things here too. Um, some numbers, the, obviously this original book page, there's some good stuff on there. Um, and then some old horticulture book stuff, this stamp, a bit of ribbons and some other old little books and a little book um, backing that has some fun stuff on it. So just kind of neutrals and I might have a pop or two of color just because um, this book is, you know, called The Blooming of New England, I think, right? The Blooming? Mm, the Flowering of New England. So we'll glue this on here. Then I have a couple other... Maybe we'll start with this. Uh, I guess I'll still need that cutter. There's a bit of embossing up here that says the Poplars, 153 Wolseley Avenue, Montreal West, PQ, Province of Quebec. I think I would like to use that. I'm going to just cut it out here. I don't think I want this handwriting though. There we go. Just cut that out. And then I'm also going to use the beautiful, this flowering of New England bit here. Put the rest of this lovely old paper in my scraps. Doing a little border around that. Okay. Then um, I want to use these. And what I'm going to do with these is actually going to be fussy cut them. So I'm just going to cut out a little section around them. Because when I fussy cut them, I want to do so on the... Um, folder. So, all right, let's glue a few things to this now. I've got this, this is from a like a doll book. I think we'll glue that one down. And then maybe I will cut this stamp out too. Um, oops. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all that blue and I'm also going to remove the North Carolina under there because um, I just want this color. Okay, so that's that. That's all good. That's all good. Okay, I need one more piece of folder, I think. Just a little one. Here we go. And then I'm looking at this book and seeing chapter seventh. Um, I 
I don't want the poem underneath it. I just want the chapter seven. Okay. I think those are all the bits that I need to put down right now. Well, maybe, maybe not. Hold on. Nope. We need texts with short notes. Um, how do I want to do this? I think I want maybe a piece of this. I have to be kind of uh, decisive because I don't, I won't have a ton of real estate on this cover, but we'll have a bit. Um, this, this, and maybe a little of that. Okay. And I may end up having to cut some of these down a little smaller, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it here. This one I pulled out for just the in retro, the retrospect. And this one I pulled out for this seed pod. And again, we're gonna do um, a fussy cut of that as well. Okay, so let's glue down the remainder of these bits onto a more solid foundation of folder here. to decide what to do with my day today. It's absolutely beautiful outside. I had physio this morning. I think it's like probably my second last physio. My foot is all better now, but I'm just, you know, checking all the boxes with my uh, physiotherapist because he wants to make sure I don't have recurrence of anything. But honestly, I think, <laughs> you know, it's funny. I shouldn't, or maybe you should say this, but you know, I got so I, my problem was over pronating um, in my shoes and also probably just wearing shoes that are too flat. Um, and so I got custom orthotics and I got like a brace for my ankle for just a little while as we firm everything up with the exercise that I'm doing. And I also just decided to like go on the Brooks website and do like a one of those surveys like what kind of like walker and runner and such are you you know how do you walk from the report that I got back from my physio I know that I over pronate and so um I got the Brooks and I gotta say my husband swears by Brooks shoes for running for walking he just loves Brooks but I hadn't tried them because you know I'm a bit of a uh you know, a fashion kind of shoe person a little bit. Not so much these days. I, I prefer to get like a more fashionable shoe than just a running shoe for everyday wear. But I've got to tell you, I got these Brooks and they are like walking on a cloud, completely like just having your foot in a pillow. And I am a total convert. I think I like them more than the um, insanely expensive orthotics that I had custom molded to my feet. It's interesting. But uh, yeah, I think with all those tools, I'll be okay. Exercises and good shoes and um, orthotics and braces and all these things, I'll be totally all good. Honestly, I'm not really feeling any pain anymore. I get a little bit of like morning stiffness in my ankle, which my physio said probably we will be able to resolve it with some um, 
additional exercises. So we're doing that now and it should be all good. Okay, just trying to get around this. I have a feeling this is gonna break in the middle there, but nothing a little glue won't fix. It's very hard to fussy cut such a delicate little bit. In fact, I'm using the wrong scissors too. That That's important. Let's get the right tools for the job maybe, huh? Ah, that's gonna pull. Okay. C'est la vie. It's okay. Let's just finish cutting the pot out though because I still want to use it. I think I need to go upstairs and see what mischief my daughter is up to. <laughs> she went upstairs to get a snack and it's taking just a little longer than it should. Okay, there we go. So I'll just keep the stem with the, the piece of the pot over here because I'll probably use both of those. Um, I'm gonna cut these out. I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna remove the word shoe at the bottom because I don't think it was part of that vintage Jumo label from the doll book. Kind of glued this one on a little crooked there. So now I have to cut <laughs> around it in kind of a crooked way. Okay, that's better. I went to a retirement party for one of my colleagues yesterday and that was nice. A lot of our retired staff and former staff who've left for various reasons were there as well and it was really nice. It was kind of nostalgic for me feeling like all of my, um, so like, I think there were two, three of my former teammates that were at my uh, office yesterday. And that was nice. My boss was very funny. He's like, what are we getting the old band back together? The <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it was nice to just have them there. We used to have a really great team of people. And I think not that I still don't, but I feel like a lot has changed. You know, it's just one of those things as you go through the years of working at a company. My colleague that was retiring, believe it or not, worked at this my company for 38 and a half years. I'm like, wow, I don't think anybody nowadays, definitely not my generation, will ever have probably the same company job for that long such a rarity now there's such a a lack of uh workers focus nowadays like companies don't care about their workers like they used to everybody is replaceable and you know it's unfortunate but i have learned uh that your company is not your family they don't love you that you can be replaced at any time um, so you should always kind of live your life with the mindset that, you know, yes, this is where the money comes from. So you should obviously do the job you're paid for and even do a little more to sort of help yourself get ahead, but don't sell your soul, you know, don't lose all your time at a job. Okay. So now we've got all these little bits here. And these are my fussy cuts that I want to use. Now, um, I've also got this. Let's just take a full look at what we have here. That's upside down. Get our stamp. I've got this little tiny tea card of Miles Standish House, built 1666. That could be our pop of color. I've got this little branch that I was thinking I might frame on here. That would be what I put in that little frame. This is from another old book. And then I have this little cabinet, tiny mini cabinet card 
from my collection of mini cabinet cards. And then I have this little pouch. It's stapled shut and it's of hooks and eyes. And I thought that might be kind of fun too. And just some fun little ribbons that are neutral as well. So now we need to take a look at the book. I think it's mostly dry, um, but I probably also want to seal it at this stage because um, I just think that'll give it more life it'll it'll live longer now that it's if it's been sealed than it would if it weren't so i will take a quick break to do that um also i'm just going to give a rub in here to this um just kind of you could also paint this whole thing inside if you want i'm choosing not to i i kind of want this shabby kind of feel to this so i'm going to go now seal this and i will be right back our book is dry now. I took a little break and I like how it looks, how it feels. So now we need to start kind of thinking about how we're going to lay out our collage on here and see how we're going to make this interesting. So we just need the front of the book, um, which is obviously this. It's got a little clump of something there. There we go. Um, the first thing I want to do is frame that little leafy bit that I have. Oops pliers are deciding to join me on this video okay so we're gonna work with this bit first um this is a dried leaf and i think what i'd like to do with it maybe is um where is my book over here okay so i'm just gonna lay it down and i'm just gonna put a little bit of coffee on it so the reason why is to just kind of not rehydrate it but just kind of flatten and soften it this is a very um low moisture leaf to begin with so getting a little bit of moisture on it just to help me train it back down is not going to cause it to like you know get moldy or get wet or anything it's it's actually basically dry again <laughs> it was dry to begin with so i want to attach it on here and i think i'll do that with art glitter glue rather than the beacon adhesive because I don't want the shine of the uh, beacon adhesive. So just go up the middle and then onto each of the little petals. There's a little bit of like a concave area on here. So it's like putting glue into the little channels. Um, then bring it over here and I want to lay it kind of across this in that little stamped frame that we did. And then I'm just going to rest my hand upon it for a moment and take a minute to reflect. <laughs> okay, Let's see if that's down. All right, good, good, good. Almost. I'm going to put my brick on top of it. Here we have this handy dandy brick. Let's see if that helps. And I'll just set that aside for a little bit. So I was thinking it might be kind of fun in these casual videos from time to time when we're waiting for a process to happen that I could just share a little something with you out of this really cool vintage wildlife almanac. It's the Canadian Wildlife Almanac and I've just opened it to July which is the month that we're currently in for the next little bit. Um, when it hovers over a flower, a hummingbird's wings can hardly be seen because they are beating at an incredible 55 beats per second. This gives it all the maneuverability of a helicopter, enabling it to hang suspended in midair, fly backwards, start sideways, and rise vertically. But this is nothing when compared to the beating rate it achieves when flying at a speed of 60 miles per hour which it does often. Its wings then vibrate about 200 times a second. The hummingbird's top speed is said to be 80 miles an hour attained when it is chasing another hummingbird. It can keep up a speed of 60 miles an hour for hundreds of miles without a stop. During the migration north from Central America in spring, ruby-throated hummingbirds frequently pass ships 200 miles out at sea, traveling four or five times faster than the ships. Hummingbirds are also especially pugnacious and will attack birds much larger than themselves. They have been known to engage hawks and eagles in aerial combat. Their weapons 
weapon is their long needle-like bill, which they use to attack the eyes of the enemies. And this, coupled with their ability to fly straight up, down, sideways, and backwards, makes them a very dangerous adversary. Not surprisingly, hummingbirds have the highest energy output per unit of weight of any living, warm-blooded animal. They also have the lowest blood temperature, reading as low as 56 Fahrenheit have been recorded. So there's our little wildlife minute. Um, now I can check on this and see how it's doing. Okay, yay, it's all laid down, perfecto. So now I think we have all our pieces. Let's review what this looked like again before I get started on my take on it, okay? Maybe we'll just give this a little fold here and set it off to the side. So this is what this piece looked like for the whole book. But what I'm doing obviously is the book cover. Um, so we'll have a little less real estate, but I think it will still be really fun. So let's bring our book over here. Now, I feel like I would like to put this colorful piece maybe here just because I think that's where the eye might sort of begin. I mean, I think for me, when I look at something, my eye actually begins over here and goes that way for some reason. But when we read, that's not how it is. So I don't know if that's just a Cindy weird thing or if other people feel the same. <laughs> then the other thing I want to do is the cabinet card. I'm starting with the things that I definitely know I need to have on this piece before everything else. So that, that, and then this I'll put sort of in the center here. Let me just move up a little so that you can see what's going on. Then we want to start with the other little things. So maybe just this. And I also think I'd like to ink around these white things with a bit of um, scorched timber, just lightly to kind of put an edge on it, but not to put a big smudge of ink on it. So just like that, it's like an outline, right? Now the flowering of New England needs to go on there because that's the book title. And I think I'll put it like here. And then this is where I think I want to put this to kind of come out of the back of that. Okay, be this up here. That just fits beautifully in here. Then this little bit of that um, embossing. Okay, maybe retrospect. That seed pod. I don't even think I need this, that little broken stem. I like how it looks just like that. Okay, and then we have this other little small flower, which I could put just here with that one, maybe, or we could move this up a bit and put it on this side. Okay. So then really the only empty little spot I have is there. So let's take a piece of this. Like so. I'm going to put it sideways. So we won't need this piece or these. Now I'll just go back and I'll do the inking of the ones that I forgot to ink. And then I have to decide if I want to do any buttons or ribbon or anything, but I think I can do that afterward as a, as a separate stage because I'm not going to attach it just to the thing. I'm actually going to put it through the entire book, okay? Um, 
like brat it right on through. So now I think we can come in with our art glitter glue and we can start putting these down. Now this, I'm gonna ink the edge again, just the same as the other ones with a light little bit. So I'll just start with the tea card. I made a big decision today. I um, I donated all of the pegs and the legs and the racks that I used to use when I did yarn shows for all my racking for all of the yarns that I used to dye and spin and go to shows and sell. I have decided that that part of my life is over. I don't want to do that anymore. If I decide I want to do yarn shows again or, or like any kind of a vendor show, I don't want to have to deal with racking anymore, but I don't even know if I want to go back to doing shows. I kind of like, you know, there's a real th nice thing about being an artist who makes things that are kind of different and strange and unlike the commonplace thing that a lot of other people make like that's definitely me I'm an outlier in the yarn world I make you know individually spun themed art art yarn and you know there's people who get it and then there's people who don't get it and that's okay except that you know there's a real aspect of education that you have to do if you want to make sales when you're at a show for knitters um, and crocheters and you know fiber artists because a large amount of those people are used to using patterns and they're there to kind of they're not necessarily artists they're they're makers you know they're crafters who are using patterns to make functional things and you know I've had people I've had amazing, amazing experiences. I've had people like buy my yarn to make garments or even just wear on runways. I've had someone make, commission me to make a bunch of my sort of signature doll, Barbie doll head yarns for their wedding dress. They, they knit the entire train of their wedding dress out of it. Um, I have had someone open a yarn store entirely because they were inspired by my hand spun yarn and they put it in a glass this beautiful wood base cabinet with glass in the middle of their shop with a little story kind of their origin story about how my yarn inspired them to see like fiber art and to start their own you know yarn store as a curator of beautiful yarns and it's just the most lovely one of the most lovely tributes to my work I've ever gotten in my whole life I mean honestly I get a lot of those kind of tributes just in people who collect my work and people who just say things to me I, it, it doesn't need to be a lot right to feel appreciated um <clears throat> and so I've just kind of decided that like I don't have the energy with little kids and this part of my life to really be able to focus myself so much on all of that stuff. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep doing it because honestly it's like hand spun yarn was only one aspect of what I did for the longest. It's always been the main aspect of what I do in the fiber art world. Um, but I also used to do hand dyed yarns but I definitely feel like there's been a real like oversaturation in the market of hand dyed especially like fingering or sock weight yarns it's just kind of oversaturated and I think it would be hard now to come back to doing that when so many other people do it it's become such a cottage industry of like lots and lots of people um so you know when those kind of things happen I think you need to reinvent and find something that again it fuels your your engine and for me bookmaking and journal making has really done that because it fits so much into everything that I like doing otherwise I love thrifting I've always loved thrifting and I love old things always been a collector of antiques and art and you know now and books 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 so I've always had a library in the space that I live 
um, I've always had to buy or rent a, a place to live that had an extra room just literally to keep books in. Um, I've always needed a library. So the nice thing is that now I have another reason to have books and also a way to use books. So that's why I started the Use Your Book series also, because I like to try to stay kind of present of mind with what I have in my space and um, not feel the, the urge to be consumerist all the time about things. Like I do thrift haul videos, but I can tell you for sure you're never going to see a T-E-M-U haul on this channel ever. <laughs> not trying to be snooty, but I don't believe in... Uh, you know, all of what they represent and huge commercialism, fast fashion, fast crafting, all that. I, I just don't like how it feels. Um, I don't think that they serve to the low income community either. I think that's kind of a misnomer. Um, there's better ways to get things. Um, also, this, we're not going to use this as much as it would have been kind of neat. I, I think it, it's just not right for this. I want this to have a classic, more soft kind of feel. So we have all those pieces now attached. I just want to take a little baby wipe now because I didn't do this at the beginning. Just go over the spine and remove this bit of paint. You see that bit of white paint right there? I just want to get that off there. There we go. And also just do a little clean in general. Just of this spine. It cleans the front of the book, but I never cleans the spine. Can I get that little bit of paint as well? Or is it dry? No, it's dry. Okay. That's okay. We can um, use my little sanding block on that. There we go. Here too, maybe just a there, just to scratch that little bit of paint. Okay, so now we'll let that dry. And I think, I don't know if I want to put a button on here. Maybe I'll start with a ribbon. And I'll see if I feel like it needs this. Like what if how I've done this is enough? I don't feel like I need more. Hmm. I like the cover though. I think it's going to be cute. Be very like, not even cute, but kind of, you know, classic. So like I could do this and then brad it down there. That might be kind of interesting. So let's, we don't need quite all of that. Probably to here. And then we'll cut each side Actually, not like that. Maybe like this. If so, now I can't. I think it'll get too wonky looking. That's good. And then this ribbon is strangely hard to cut. Okay, there we go. Now let's get rid of the little bits that fell. And I just need a couple little brads and I think I'm gonna go with bronze. Yeah, we'll go bronze. Okay. So I'll put a little glue on the back of here just to hold this in place okay then more little ribbon project here I think I'm 
I'm going to need another brad. This one I think what I'd like to do is just create like a little loop. Pokey tool. Here it is. Sorry, I'm off camera. I'm just poking this a little closer to my body so I don't stab myself. Because <laughs> that wouldn't be good. I'm just, I'll show this to you in a second. I'm just trying to get the brad in. To the hole here and it's being quite stubborn there it goes okay and now just open the brad and we should have this little bow Then we have yet to see if I even like how it looks. Because I am a picky one. Okay. Why does this keep bending? Because <laughs> it was bent for a long time in the opposite direction. So we're going to poke a hole right here. And another one right here, I think. And I'm just going to need my, my little gardener's kneeling mat, which is over here. Okay. going to scrape away the excess bulk from poking through the book before I flatten out these brads. Usually I shave them off with a knife, but this is fine too. It's not a lot of paper to remove, it's just a little bit. And this one. Yeah, I like it. I'm going to put it right here in between. So I'm just going to open this brad back up that I've used to go through all this ribbon. Just don't let the ribbon come off. Come back here and I'll show you what I mean about shaving it off. Um, you can just take a blade like this, not in front of your hand, but you know, this kind of, I've moved my hand, but I am coming toward myself. It's usually much easier if you just kind of make your blade long, but this is kind of a uh, far in here. You see that it's 
slide it along like that and that really takes all the paper off um oops did i flip that back up i did there we go okay so now come back to the front plunk this through just make sure you have it the right side up obviously Come on, get in there. There it is. I'm gonna need to just press this out so it stops flipping up but that's okay I can deal with that all right so there is our cover and I quite like that so let's take a look at the project that I made beside the project that we saw pretty fun I think so that's a nice inspiring kind of way to build yourself like you know a collage kind of you know cabinet card curiosity kind of but also like you know calm enough it, I think it would fit in with a lot of aesthetic that for people who feel maybe they they like something interesting but they don't want it to be too wild you know you've brought your neutrals in it's not like a lot of bulk coming off the cover or anything. It's not hard to handle. So yeah, this will be a really fun cover and I'll probably start making a journal in it soon because I just, I think it was a really, really nice journal. Sorry, I just had to switch batteries. Um, so thank you for joining me for this. I think that you should give it a try if you're looking for, you know, a way to make a fun cover and, um, you will see this book soon when it is done. I think that I'll probably end up using some of my rusty carbonized leaf papers in here and think about making kind of a horticulture type journal. Um, so thank you and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.